Hey, yo, and what is up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me once again here on the channel. We have got some breaking news to go over. We have got the reason for you why Naomi lost at SummerSlam. We also have the reason why Nakamura and Rusev lost the way they did at SummerSlam. We also have got today a Wrestle Crate unboxing. And we are going to do all of that right here and right now on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Let's do it because I want to open that box. <laughs> This episode of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show is brought to you by Clutch Chairs. Level up your game now with a clutch chair. Don't forget to check it out in the description down below. All right, gang, let's get this party started. And I'm very, very excited. I'm always very excited for my Wrestle Crate. So as much as I want to leave that towards the end to kind of tease you guys, I can't fucking take the suspense anymore. We are going to kick this off with a Wrestle Crate unboxing. I am Nick Nightmare. This is Blue the Snowball Microphone. Welcome back to the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. It has been one hell of a fucking week. SummerSlam absolutely drained me. I tried... My damnedest to stay off this microphone and off this camera. I was going to try to take a couple of days to recuperate. I ended up only getting one. There was news circulating and I had to fight myself to stay away and just to try to get the juices flowing again so I could bring you guys my very, very best. And after last weekend, man, there, there was nothing left. There was nothing left in here by the time SmackDown finished. And I want to thank everybody that jumped on board the channel over the past weekend. If I met you in person, you're fucking awesome. Thank you for subscribing. They're at 205th with the gang. Let's get this party started off. Never mind the parties that I had all weekend long, which was absolutely fucking fantastic. Thank you guys so much for coming out and for being a part of my SummerSlam weekend, if you were, in fact, part of that weekend. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. I cannot take it anymore. Here we go. Mr. Exacto. Professor Exacto, if I may be so inclined to correct myself as we get this tape out of here. Get it out of here. Boom. And boom. Three simple steps to happiness. Last month's crate was fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. So I hope that this one is just as good let's pop the top and get this thing rolling all right what do we got here what do we got here what do we got here i feel like hot rod i wish that was half of what the hot rod was check it out rowdy roddy piper t-shirt this is the back very nice i have absolutely nothing with Rowdy Roddy Piper on it, and I, although I would have much preferred maybe the logo on the front and the Rowdy over here, I will take this. I like this t-shirt. White, not my favorite, but the Rowdy one can't go wrong with some Rowdy Roddy Piper merch. Let's check out what else they sent me this week. Oh, oh, I like these. I don't know if you guys would like these, but I like these. Last month, we got AJ Styles. This month... We got my daughter's absolute favorite and first wrestling crush, Seth Rollins. Wooden magnet. This is absolutely fucking awesome. He's going to go right up on the fridge right next to AJ Styles. Fucking awesome. I love these little magnet things. They're great. We got another pin coming at us. What a kind of a pin. I love it. I love it. Doink the Clown. 
pin action. Pin it in your ass. Just like I love to say every time I get a pin. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no more room on the warrior hat. I might just end up getting a board and pegging it all up like everybody else says they're going to do. And then nobody does. And I might become one of those guys. But I'm going to try my very best to get all of these pins on display for you. Fucking Doink the Clown. One of my favorite heels of the 90s before they ruined him with Dink and made him a, a real clown and a fucking joke. And uh, always miss those days. And that very Joker-esque Doink the Clown. And that... that will never get old with me. I wish it was still around right now. God bless his soul. Half pint heroes. Or pint size heroes. Whatever. Maybe not half pint. Maybe a quarter pint because they're so tiny. Let's open this shit up and check it out. My little girl would love these. She's a blind bag nut as most of these little kids are nowadays. It's annoying. But who do we got? Oh. If I could choose anyone, this would be the one. Look at this little guy right here. Check him out. Look at this. Undertaker pint size hero. I fucking love it. Who else do they got here? They got Kevin Owens. Andre the Giant would have been nice. You got Nikki Bella, Brock Lesnar, John Cena, of course, The New Day, The Wyatts. I got the best one. Well, Randy Savage is there. That would have been definitely up there with this one, but the, look at this, look at this fucking little guy, awesome, awesome, I wish I could stick him right here somehow, but we can't, we're gonna put him up on the shelf, next to Ted DiBiase that we got in that other box, fucking awesome, here's the cheat sheet, we're gonna pull that out when we're really finished here, oh, we got a Bill Goldberg tattoo emblem sticker, I love stickers, I love emblems, I can throw this on a guitar or something, I don't mind, Bill Goldberg is a legend. He may not be the best in the world, but he's uh, he holds his place in wrestling history, and we love us some fucking wrestling, so I like it. I like it. I'll stick it somewhere. I'm going to stick it on you, I promise. What else we got here? We got a little WrestleCrate sticker. Oh, maybe we could uh, maybe we'll put it on blue. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe another time. <laughs> right now we got some more. We got a lot of stuff in this box this month. We got a lot, another one of these little uh, little comic book things here. I don't know. These are alright. You know, if you guys have been watching me, you know I don't really care too much for this kind of stuff. You know, I got enough comic books of my own that I don't read. I got CM Punk's Thor collection that I won't touch. You know what I mean? But things like this, eh, you know, whatever. You get whatever. We got another book here. <clears throat> what do we got here? The Professional Wrestling Fan Magazine Calling Spots. Never heard of it. Maybe it will be interesting. We got some some articles in here. Power Struggle, Vince and, uh, Vince and Trish, some pretty nice artwork in there, some very talented people writing some of this stuff here, but, uh, whatever, maybe we'll read it, maybe not, who the fuck knows, maybe I'll give it away to somebody at a live event if I ever get the chance to actually fucking do that, what do we got here, we got a DVD, like they like to send us, a little DVD, Gold 2K17, Wrestling's Toughest tournament from june 11th 2017 in toronto ontario canada who do we got on here oh wow this is uh this ain't bad well maybe i spoke too soon i saw one name that i knew on this thing and i got excited <laughs> leo rush has a match on here leo rush was just signed to NXT, and he will be appearing in NXT very, very soon. I met Leo Rush. He's a hell of a fucking nice guy. Absolutely fantastic. And now we come down to the autograph. Well, at least I hope it's an autograph. Here we go. All right. Not so great with the autograph. For me personally, you guys might mark out for it. You guys might give a shit about Matt Riddle. He was supposed to be... At the House of Glory show on Friday, but he had gotten injured the night before at another local indie show in town in New York City and was unable to compete against Stefan Bonner at the House of Glory show. So uh, I guess I got your autograph anyway. I probably would have got it that night had you showed up, but uh, I got it anyway. Why not? Matt Riddle, I'm sure it'll be worth something someday. You know, not my favorite autograph, but a pretty good box. Nothing to really get that upset about it. I loved my little Undertaker man. I loved my Rowdy Rowdy Piper t-shirt. The autograph is what it is. We got this awesome Seth Rollins magnet. We got Doink the Clown pin. 
a good box. Not a great box, but a good box. I will take it. No problem. We're going to stick Seth Rollins right on that refrigerator as soon as we wrap up this show. So that was the fun and games portion of today's show. Now let's get down to some serious business and let's talk about a little bit of wrestling news since I have your attention. We are going to talk about Asuka. If you have not heard by now, Asuka coming out of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn has broken her collarbone and will be out for at least the next six to eight weeks. The WWE this week held tapings of NXT for the first time since SummerSlam, and the news has broken all over social media. Asuka will be relinquishing the title and will be out to recuperate that broken collarbone. Everybody expects her, upon her return, to be called up to the main roster. My thoughts about this are very, very simple. I do not enjoy... Anybody being hurt, I wish she wasn't hurt because she's fucking awesome and she does not deserve to be sidelined with an injury. However, this, if it was going to happen, let it happen right now because it's almost the perfect time for something like this to happen for her. Because I have absolutely zero faith in the WWE creative to bring her up successfully and not ruin Asuka. And everything that's come along with her. In fact, I was actually worried that they were going to end up making her drop the title to somebody upon her leaving and coming up to the main roster. But she is too special to lose to anybody in NXT. Her first loss should come at the hands of somebody on the main roster. Not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. And now we don't have to really worry about that too much. Because... She doesn't have to worry about being the NXT Women's Champion anymore. She gave that up. God knows what they're going to do with it. Hopefully they throw together some type of a tournament on NXT to crown a new Women's Champion. And then maybe you could even have the Mae Young Classic winner go one-on-one against their number one contender or their Women's Championship winner to crown the new Women's Champion. I don't know. Just a little spitballing on my part. But couldn't have come at a better time for Asuka. Because they will not be able to ruin her before she hits the main roster. Everybody always, you know, we will always want everybody to go to SmackDown. We always want everybody to go to SmackDown. But in this case, I don't. I want Asuka to go to Raw. Only because if you bring her up right away and you put her on the same show as Charlotte and you give us Charlotte versus Asuka right away, as they tend to be doing because they don't have any patience anymore and they just pull the trigger on everything, it's going to, I think, take away from Asuka. There will be... I mean, who is really bigger than Charlotte? Charlotte Flair is the biggest name in the division. Let's be honest about it. It doesn't matter how you feel about her performance or about her promos. She's Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair versus Asuka for a championship title at any pay-per-view is special. At a WrestleMania would be even more special. But if you keep them separate, and now you allow Asuka to have a reign on Raw, let her fight with Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks and Nia Jax. Let Asuka get over again. Let her be undefeated on Raw. Let her have the Women's Championship. You do the same thing with Charlotte. And then you just, you just build and build and build. Champion versus champion. Winner is the best women's wrestler in the world. I don't know if you want to do title for title unless you're going to unify the women's division, which would be great. Which would be great. I would love it. And put it all on one show. And then you don't have to worry about who's here and who's there. And just all the girls, all together, one division. And build it from the ground up. Start fresh with Asuka as your champion. And then you could build everybody chasing Asuka. And she could do the same thing. She could be babyface Asuka and and go until she can't fucking have any competition. There's just nobody that could beat me. She's going to beat down everybody. Then she could become the conceited, you know, kind of weird, kind of heel Asuka. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't love that she's hurt, but I love the fact that they will not be able to fuck it up for her. Because all they do is fuck things up. And sometimes the reason for it, or the reason behind it, is absolutely fucking asinine and what i mean by that is there are reports going around right now that the reason behind naomi losing the title belt 
is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Let's get into this one. Initially, the plans were for Naomi to retain her title at SummerSlam. Mattel Toy Company even has plans in place to replicate the glow belt in toy fashion for kids to buy. Obviously, you're going to want to have your champion have that belt when that debuts, or nobody's, you know, you want to hype it, you want to see it. I mean, she's got it on TV every week. The kids are going to want it. I mean, yeah, they've seen it. They're probably still going to want it. But we all thought this made no sense. Naomi losing her title to Natalya at SummerSlam in the middle of a run in which she's really done nothing yet. She's done absolutely nothing of importance. She's beaten Lana about six times in a total match time, maybe about three minutes in all six of those matches. But the reasoning they're giving, or what is being reported, is that on SmackDown Live, while she was on commentary, JBL, the ass that he is, asked her a question, gone a little off the script, and asked him his own little personal question, and asked her if she would be having a special entrance of some sort at SummerSlam. Fair enough question. To which Naomi replied, yes. And this is the reason why she's being punished by creative because there were no initial plans for Naomi to have a special entrance at SummerSlam. So now they kind of felt pigeonholed into giving her something special. I don't remember her entrance being anything more out of the ordinary than usual. Do you? Because I don't remember it being any more special. But they're apparently saying that they had to throw something even more special together for her at the 11th hour. And that... As a punishment of sorts, you can't see it any other way, they decided to change who was going to win that match because you don't do things like that. You don't say things like that. You got to stay on the script. I don't know. If this is truly the reasoning behind it, it's absolutely asinine. This girl has been doing the best work of her career. She has more potential than anything. And you are going to take a reign away from her. Disrupt her championship title reign. Because she said yes, she's going to have a special entrance. Maybe she was just speaking in jest. Maybe she feels that every entrance she makes is a special entrance. Maybe she was just going to do a little special dance kick and it had nothing to do with having to do any special lighting or anything like they had to do for Shinsuke or Finn Balor, which were the only two special entrances that were on the call sheet that night. So now they had to do something special for Naomi, which miffed everybody else off. And Creative was like, all right, well, we're going to take the title off you now. Watch your mouth. I mean, is that that essentially what we're talking about here? That's what the story says. That can't be true. If it is true, it's just further proof of everything that we say on this show about how this company is just fucking gone. The WWE is gone. And there's this weird corporate entity in place of it that has nothing in their minds about wrestling. They don't know anything about wrestling. And they're going off of gossip and and acting like the real housewives. Like, oh, she said said something she shouldn't said. We're going to punish her for that. I don't get it. I don't get it. Just like I don't get... Shinsuke Nakamura losing at SummerSlam. And the reasoning now behind this, it's not really a reason. It's its just a report of what happened. Okay? There's no real in-depth reasoning why Vince McMahon chose to do what he did. But the original finish was supposed to be what all of us were expecting, which was Shinsuke Nakamura was going to win by disqualification. Fair enough. That's how it should have went down. But sometime around 7 p.m., two hours after the show has already begun airing on the network, the show is essentially in progress. And Vince McMahon decides Jinder's going to pin Nakamura. 
And that's it. There's no changing the boss's mind. He just flip-flopped on it almost like an hour before the match went on. There's no further reasoning behind it. The reason behind it all lays in Vince McMahon's delusional brain. Because that was the absolute wrong move to make. And for him to have the right move in place and then to change it and make it so fucking wrong. Wow. This decision would have an after effect that would reach beyond Shinsuke Nakamura and Jinder Mahal's match and would effectively cause Rusev to lose to Randy Orton. Initial plans for Rusev were to beat Randy Orton in some type of a heel cheat to win scenario. But the WWE is looking at their card now. Vince made this change. Jinder Mahal is winning. It looks like every bad guy on the match, on the card, in every match, is winning. They didn't want to have a t- too many heels go over. They didn't want to have a heel-heavy victory card. So they took it away from Rusev. The fact that you took it away from him in nine seconds makes you even more fucking ridiculous. Why? Can you tell me why? It makes no sense. One decision, one maneuver affected four careers. And the only person that gets anything out of it is Vince. This doesn't help Randy Orton, even if it's just the beginning of a feud with Rusev. First of all, who wants to see that? Nobody wants to see Randy Orton and Rusev. Hasn't that been going on? Didn't that go on once before? I feel like I've seen it already. No, it doesn't help Rusev. Doesn't help Shinsuke. Definitely doesn't help Jinder. It only makes everybody else revel- revolt against him more. You're making us hate the company even more. So who's feeling good about all of this? The boss. Walking around with his head held high like he put together the greatest fucking SummerSlam that ever lived. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. As far as your injury report today, guys, we got everybody knows, you know, we talked about Asuka at the start of the news, uh, but Big Cass is going to be out six to nine months. Torn ACL, most likely. We're still awaiting news on his MRI. We don't have any concrete uh, definitive return date or anything more on it just yet. I've been looking. Believe me, I've been looking, but uh, hasn't been really much on Big Cass's situation except the fact that he will be out indefinitely for quite some time. And that's going to do it. That's all I got for you guys today. I don't want to talk about Beach Ball Mania. We're not going to talk about that one this time. If you guys want to hear about Beach Bowl Mania and you want to hear my thoughts about the whole Beach Bowl thing, you can let me know in the comments below. Leave me a question. You can leave me a hashtag, Beach Bowl Mania. This way I know you made it this far through the video and you want to hear me go off on this Beach Bowl thing because there's two sides to the argument. And I happen to fall on both of them. And I know that's kind of a bullshit thing to say and that I can't be, you know, on both sides. But I can and I will because... It's my show, and that's what I'm going to do. And what show is this? You know what show it is. This is the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right here on Sledgehammer TV. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on this news and our WrestleCrate unboxing combo. Everything, like I said this weekend, off the charts. All our new subscribers, lots and lots of views, lots of traffic on the channel. Thank you guys all so very, very much for making this a very special one-year anniversary week. For all of us here at the show. That's going to do it. We are done. And I'm going to try to take another day off. Hopefully nothing else pops up that pulls me in front of this microphone. Thank you guys for watching. And I, we, me and Blushki, are out of here. And we will see you next time right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Thank you guys. See you next time. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.